So off, the, off each cylinder, we have one of these tubes here. This is our exhaust. Okay. That's our exhaust system. While the engine's running, really, really hot exhaust gases are going through these tubes. They collect down in here and come out our tube that sticks out of the cowling. You'll see it on all of our 172s that we have. And they all work in a very similar way. Surrounding our exhaust shroud, and if you guys want to see, I know it's kind of tight, exhaust system is a shroud. And that shroud, while it doesn't contain any exhaust gases, has air coming around it, heating up, and then can be ducted to the carburetor here. So if you look, and I encourage you guys to come closer and take a peek, as our carburetor sits right down in there, we're really close to our exhaust shroud right up in here. These pieces are totally separate. That one there is missing the exhaust shroud on the tape. So air is ducted around that, heats up, and then we feed that to the carburetor with our carburetor control heat, which is a little flapper down in here. And if you don't mind, I meant to grab it. I left it inside, but I've got a, I've got a, uh, uh, what's called a carburetor air box, which allows us to control heat. So I'm gonna run and grab that real quick. Let me grab that make sure. This is called an air box. And all this does is this is either going to be having carburetor heat on or carburetor heat off. So when you sit there and you pull that lever that's in the cockpit, you can see a little drop in RPM, this is what it's controlled. Inside this is a little flapper that moves forward and back. In our normal operation, with the air filter up here and our carburetor up here, it's pushed forward, air comes in through the center and then up and through the carburetor. If we were to pull that carburetor heat, it's going to close off air from the front now it's going to be sucking air through this side port, which has that heat that's coming from the exhaust shroud, now heating up the carburetor, melting the ice, we lose the carburetor ice in, and we put it back to it. And that's a concept that's really nice that I can have this box, because you can see it move, but you can't see what it's doing. But if you guys want to pass around, you're more than welcome to. This tube, this tube sits just in front of the butterfly valve. So even though the, the throttle may be fully closed, you're still going to get uh, a little bit of a little bit of air getting sucked around it, and you have this jet that sits just outside the uh, the butterfly valve for the for the throttle. When you sit there and you start cranking it, and you get even just that little bit of suction, you now have this secondary tube which is injecting air right past the throttle. It doesn't even care that it's closed. It's now sucking air past it without even worrying. It. And now another thing he mentioned too was priming, which is another big aspect of. Uh, of how we get it started and fuel distribution too. Um, and if you look on the bottom of each one of these cylinders, if you can see it, we have these little lines here. Each one of the cylinders has one. They're copper lines, and they go behind the intake valve of each cylinder. So when you sit in there and you pull that little plunger out and you hear it suck some fuel and then you push it back in, what it's doing is it's actually taking a little bit of fuel and shooting it behind the intake. Even though it's not closed, it's sitting there, it's gonna puddle in. And when you crank it over and that valve opens up, there's fuel directly at the cylinders, ready to go, ready to fire. It makes starting, especially on like a cold day, a lot easier. So we don't have to deal with icing, we don't have to deal with anything in the carburetor. It's there and it's ready to go. Owen, can you explain the difference between that and pumping the throttle? Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of us see that too. A lot of people will go to start an engine, they'll pump the throttle a few times, and it works, it starts right off. That has to do with the carburetor and another piece of it, which is called the accelerator pump. So I'm going to draw it to this side, and this isn't a scale or, or anything what a carburetor looks like. But on the side, you have a small little pump. If this pump is, say, one inch wide, we have a half inch piston. It doesn't do much when it's moved slowly, and this is linked with the butterfly valve and the carburetor. And I'll show it to you on the side of this one. But when this butterfly valve moves, this piston is allowed to move up and down in this little bowl full of fuel. And it's connected to the same valve, just like that. So when you sit there and you fire while it really quick, say on a go around, or even if you're trying to start it, by moving that throttle very quickly, what happens is this piston, even though it's small enough too, is going to build a little bit of pressure, and that's going to shoot fuel directly out of that main jet. There's, there's, there's pros and cons to it. We need it to do a go around because when we sit there and we firewall it, if we didn't have that, the engine's going to start sputtering because we didn't we didn't give it extra fuel. We, we opened up a ton of air, and we didn't introduce any more fuel to it. So that's required for those really hard, really fast. I got to get out of here kind of moments. Question. Yes. Uh, go around. I mean, 
fast do you want to so, versus a normal takeoff? Yeah. Like three seconds. Yeah, so your normal takeoff, slow push. The accelerator pump isn't even a part of that. It's moving so slow, it doesn't build any pressure, it has nothing to do. But even even just like a, a, a rapid, it doesn't have to be slamming it to the firewall, but just pushing it fast will build enough pressure to give it just a little bit extra fuel. If you guys want to come around here, I'll show you the accelerator pump on this. And I'll move the throttle so you can see it moving too. So it's actually on the side right here. You guys can come on around because it's only on this side. See this small tube right here? That's linked to the throttle. And I'm going to go into the cockpit and move the flashlight for Feel free to gather around and I'm going to move it so you guys you won't see any fuel move. fuel out through the carburetor it's going to give it extra fuel to start but the problem is if you if you shove that forward without the prop turning without air getting sucked up through the carburetor all that's going to happen is it's going to push extra fuel in the carburetor and it's going to fall into that air box that i was just showing you guys now you have a bunch of fuel sitting before the carburetor and if you get any kind of backfire through the intake system it's going to light that up real quick and it's a real quick way to start a fire in the any of y'all ever heard of, the, of any kind of procedure that happens if you do have an intake fire? Keep it cranking. You want to suck it up into the aircraft. So even if you hear that pop, don't stop it. Let it crank. Let it turn over. It's going to suck the, suck any kind of any kind of fire, any kind of fuel where it needs to go, which is back in the cylinders and not outside. Shaking the instrument panel. What happened? Most likely, you got what's called a foul. I'll pass this around. Feel free to look at it. That is a bad spot. This is a good spark plug. And what's building up on the plugs is lead. We have lead in our fuel. It's called 100 low this. It's not really low in lead. High. Lead is used in the fuel um, to not only boost the octane but actually help move the engine as well. But that octane booster builds up and it crystallizes. So when that fuel is ignited and burns, you actually get crystals of lead that build up on spark plugs. And when it builds up enough, that spark plug's not allowed to fire. Spark plugs all work off arcing. And I'll show you here, I've got a fun little test that'll show you a spark plug fire. What happens is when our magnetos produce electricity to go to the plugs, it wants to arc, and the brighter the arc, the better. So we can get better burn in the fuel, we can get that cylinder picking quicker. Uh, and a lot of you guys will learn in your system class something called a magneto. A magneto is what's driving the electricity to the spark plugs. It's, it's a self-contained power unit, essentially, that's producing its own electricity. It's completely separate from any electrical system on the aircraft, and it's engine -driven. So anytime the engine's turning over, it's here, here, those clicks, those are the magnetos turning. Magnetos work, um, they can be very complicated. You, know, you could probably read an essay on how a magneto works. But essentially what's inside a magneto is a magnet that's spinning inside a coil of wire. And if any of you guys have any experience with electricity or, or any kind of that, when you spin a magnet and it crosses a field, it produces electricity. That magneto now takes the electricity and amplifies it with a, a small transformer, a capacitor that's in the magneto, builds up that electricity and sends it, sends it to each of those spark plugs. And I've got one here sitting here too. They're rather heavy for such a small little unit. That plugs into the back of the engine, and as it's spinning, it's producing the electricity. And just like the spark plugs where we have two of them in each of the cylinders, we have two magnetos for each engine. Redundancy, it's safer if we have one fail. We now have another one that's running, running our cylinders. Um, our left magneto will run two of the spark plugs on the right, 
and our right magneto will run two spark plugs on the left, and vice versa. Each magneto is going to run a spark plug on one of the cylinders. So if we have either one of the plugs go back or one of the one of the magnetos go back, the cylinder is still going to be firing. Granted that the other magneto is still firing. Can you explain uh, why we should excuse me why we should lean during the taxi? Yes, that's a big one, especially for flight school airplanes, because we spend a lot of time not only on the ground but at a thousand feet where these airplanes are sitting there running full rich, using a lot of fuel. Um, leaning on taxi is huge. We're at a low RPM, so we don't have to worry about the engine heating up. The engine's not really working a ton; it's just kind of pulling us around the taxiway. But when we lean the mixture, we're using a little bit less fuel a little bit less lead that can build up on those plugs. So it just helps reduce the chances of a bad run. So we don't need all that fuel. It's already set up to run a little bit rich to where the engine runs nice and cool. We can lean it out, make sure it's nice and happy, and we're not gonna get lead there. So that's huge. You don't have to lean on taxi, but it's highly, highly, highly recommended. So I'm gonna pass this around one more time. This center piece here is called the electrode. So this piece right in the middle, is what's getting the electricity from the magneto. That's sitting there in that charge, just like if you were to roll around on a carpet and then touch your body to try and park across and do a little static shot, works off the same principle. That center electrode now has a ton of electricity that needs to go somewhere. It arcs across to these small points and essentially back to the engine case. The electricity is just trying to find a common ground, an area that has no electricity. So the potential is what causes that arc. So I'm going to thread this in here. This allows me to actually add some air. You'll see the gauge come up. This is mimicking compression in the cylinder. And when I squeeze this, you guys can come around because it'll be hard to see. If you want a one at a time look as I squeeze, see it fire? I thought it'd be brighter than that. They're not, it's not a giant arc. Each one you can come and look, 